that technical issue. At the end of the presentation, we will invite our chairperson to give his close, closing remarks. So please, let's continue quickly. So we are talking about language skills, just as I said. We have four language skills, learning skills, research skills, or techniques. And then what to be the, what, what, what pragmatic or practical way that we can adopt or adapt to enable us to do well academically as university students? What are the pragmatic or practical ways that you can adapt in order to do well academically. So first and foremost, don't forget that you need to have the four language skills, listening skills, speaking skills, reading skills, and writing skills. And I just say that the four skills must be acquired chronologically, sequentially. When you read the word of God, James 1 verse 19, that everyone must be swift to listen and slow to speak. So you can deduce from this quotation, biblical citation, that there are two major skills here, listening skills and reading skills. In other words, from archaeology to zoology, listening skills and speaking skills are part and parcel of life. You cannot do away with listening skills and do well academically. When you attend any lecture, any presentation, we need to have the listening skills. Even in this presentation, you need to have the listening skills. You need to take note of everything that is being said or discussed here in order to do well. In actual fact, you cannot acquire every skills in a book or through the lectures that you normally get or receive in your various from various universities or institutions. Even through casual conversations, you can acquire some skills. So even in this presentation, if you observe very well, at the end of the day, you, are, you should be able to acquire the presentation skills. When you see sometimes how people present, sometimes when you do attend some, uh, 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 what do you call seminars or maybe thesis, defense or present, uh, long essays, presentations, you can see that the, the slides are highly verbose. You can see verbosity of the slides, like everywhere is occupied. We don't do that. That doesn't show, that doesn't depict that you really know how to present meaningfully, or you do have the presentation skills. So you can even learn from what we are doing here right now. You look at it, you have four major skills, and at this is that you need to have them listening skills, speaking skills. When it comes to the acquisition of our first language, our mother tongue, nobody sat us down to teach us key. I don't remember, I can speak Bono. I can speak Kri, Asante Kri, Fante, small, small. And when I traveled to Bolgatanga, I studied Gruni, Fra Fra. I can study Fra Fra, small, small. Don Mayore, Michael, also Tebri. Mato, Farfare, Fi, Fi. You see, that is Gruni, Fra Fra. Nobody sat me down to say, this is it, this is how it's When I found myself among the native speakers in Bolgatanga, then, I studied, I just got to know certain things automatically because I hear them speaking. Then you also tend to speak. So what we are saying here is that, in fact, the best way for acquiring language skills or learning any language is to find yourself among native speakers. If you do find yourself among native speakers, you don't need to sit down for somebody to say, S or so, N or no, to teach you, no. You tend to speak. You begin to speak through listening. So what we are saying here is that you, university students, when you attend lectures, learn to have listening skills. Sometimes what I've observed is that you'll be teaching, and then some students will be flipping, going through their phones, browsing certain things. 
unfortunately, sometimes we see them browsing or, or, or something different. That might not have any bearing on their, their, their course of study. And if you do that, how can you do well, my brother, my sister? So we need to have listening skills. And then we have the speaking skills. Before reading skills, after you have been taught a particular course, a particular lesson, you need to sit down and read. If you don't read, it is usually said that readers are leaders. Readers are usually the leaders. If you want to be a leader among your peers, colleagues, you need to read and read and read again and again. Reading must be your lifestyle. So if you don't have the reading skills, you don't read, you wait till the end of the exam or you wait when it's about to write exam or the end of semester exams or mid semester before be looking for learning materials to study. My brother, my sister, if you do that, you will never, never do well. You cannot excel if you do so. So you listen, you speak, like in class, if you don't understand them, you should be able to voice your points or your worries or anxiety. You need to be able to voice it. You need to be able to say it. No, you don't understand and you will not talk. And then the lecturer will ask, do you understand? Yes, sir. Second three, yes, sir. Have you with the question? No. But when you ask him questions, trouble, then you can't do it. If you do that, you are punishing your own self. So if you don't understand something, voice it, speak in class, and nobody can punish you for even speaking to make mistakes or whatever. So reading skills, you must read any material that you come across, particularly the one that may have bearing on your course of study or program of study. You need to read in order to proceed to writing. If you don't read, you want to write. So the point I'm trying to say is that if you know you have not read enough, then please don't opt for writing any exam. Don't go, don't sit for any exam. You have not read enough. You wait like you are going through the course. It's just every day you, go, you attend classes, you attend lectures, and you don't read. When they start for exam, you go and write. If you have not read, what can you write? You cannot write anything. So just as I said, you acquire all the four skills. You need to consider all the four skills chronologically. Writing should be the last aspect. Writing skills is the last thing to talk about me at the university level. We don't just enter the class and say, that start writing. We don't do that. That's what, that's what it's supposed to be. And those of us who even teach, teach languages, those of us who teach languages, we shouldn't just come to class and start by writing. No, we shouldn't do so. It's a wrong method, a wrong way for teaching students. If you are even a language tutor or teacher or lecturer, we shouldn't start by writing. Start by speaking. Speak. Talk to the children, the students. Let them understand how to pronounce certain words or expressions in the language. Let them acquire it by just listening, the language by listening. Before you tend to write it on the board or project it for them to see, then they will start reading. Then after reading, you can proceed, you can move on to where writing. This is how it's supposed to be. If you do so, we will help our students. I've observed that the reason why a lot of us in Anglophone countries or from Anglophone countries, we don't do well in French is that how French is taught is very bad. How French is taught by some of our teachers is very poor. It's no good at all. A, a teacher will enter, a French teacher will enter the class. We, oui, la conjugation, start writing. How do you conjugate this? How do you do this? How do you write this? We, we don't start by writing. We don't start the teaching students learn a language by writing. It's a poor way of doing so. So let's continue. Very good.
So I we now we have learning skills. Learning skills. We need to have the critical thinking. We need to have that critical thinking ability. We should be able to analyze things critically. So in this course, those of us who study applied linguistics, social linguistics, and what have you linguistics, we have at the stem one of the courses as well, critical discourse analysis. Critical discourse analysis. I think this course, every student should be able to uh, take it or do it. Critical discourse analysis. I will say that a lot of us we don't know how to analyze things critically at all. They don't know how to analyze things at all. And if you want to do well, you should be able to analyze things critically. Whatever material, learning material that you'll be introduced to in class, you should be able to ask questions. We should be able to subject it to proper scrutiny, proper scrutiny, analysis as students so that you can understand and do well. If you can do critical thinking, or you can analyze things critically, then you do have the understanding because understanding is very, very important in every aspect of life. If you don't understand it, what will bring the difference between first class today and then pass somebody get a third class to them is the level of understanding. If you don't understand it, 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 it you can't do well. If you can't analyze things critically, you can't do well. So you need to understand. So the Holy Book say in all that getting, get understanding and get wisdom. Understanding is very, very important. So creative thinking, you need to be creative, innovative. We need to have innovative ideas. If you do so, then definitely you will tend to do well. You will do well. I can refer you to if you go through thoughtfulthinking.com. I think I will, at the end of the day, you see the source. That's one thing you also take note. If you are a researcher, a learner, it's not everything, particularly when you, you did consult some material, you shouldn't write it and see if everything is lost. That is the fact. In fact, I read something from thoughtfulthinking.com and I'll give you the reference. You check that you get the, the explanation for all that. But I'm not just, I'm not here to explain everything, paper thing here. But I want you to understand that these are the learning skills you need to all have. And communication, you need to have the communicative skills. That is why in our university we have communicative skills. We have communicative skills. And communicative skills is like, it's a, it's a, it's a universal asset. And, it, and then, so language skills is a subset. Because when you talk about communication, you can have nonverbal communication and verbal communication. Nonverbal communication can be gestures, gestures, actions, mommy, okay? Where you will not talk, you will not, you will not hear anywhere. For instance, as I'm talking to you, nonverbal communication, I can say, if I do this, it means, what does it mean? If I do this, what does it mean? It means let's pray or something. Let's pray. I will do this. Like with close or bye-bye. That's it. So now better communication. I'm not saying anything. You need to, in communication, for you to do well in every aspect, you need to understand all this. If you are there with your family, you don't know how to communicate. There can be a problem in your marriage or in the family. So communication is very, very important. But what we are saying here is that the lecturer, you have been taught. You have been taught by your lecturers or by your teachers. At the end of the day, how are you going to communicate all that you have been taught, all that you claim, you purport, you know? If you are not able to communicate very well, you cannot do well. You cannot do well. And then let's proceed to the fourth point. The fourth point is collaboration. Collaboration here is cooperation. Linking up with your colleagues, with your friends, with your senior colleagues, those who are ahead of you, we should know how to collaborate, work together, team work. You need to, you need to team up. We need to have that spirit of all working together. Together, that is very, very important. Not to be doing anything in isolation. 
at the university, at the university students, <laughs> don't behave like primary school students or primary school child or primary uh, senior high school students. Where when you are learning, you are studying something, and you know that this particular topic or uh, sub thing will come. This particular topic will come in the exam, <laughs> and then you cover. You don't want the the person to see. If you do so, you will not do well. You will not do well. You will not do well. For all you know, what you claim you know, you know nothing. What you claim you know, you really know nothing. Till you voice it, and somebody will correct you, pinpoint your shortfalls or mistakes, tell you that no, this one is supposed to be this or that. So you need to work together. You need to have group discussion with your friends, with your course mates. If you know something, you go online, you say something and you know it, please don't hide to do it or to study it alone. Share it. And if you, as you teach others, you get to know very well better. That is the point we are trying to do here. And if you want to do well in every aspect of life, communication is very, very important. So if you look at the language skills, each of them starts with the letter C. So you can consider the four skill, four C's, language skills, learning skills as the four C's that you need to have in order to equally do well academically. Good. So now let's talk about research skills. Research skills. Whether you like it or not, by the end of your study at the university or at the tertiary level, you'll be asked to write project work, long essays, dissertation, thesis, and what have you. As for partial fulfillment of the requirement for the award of degrees, you might have done well academically when it comes to all the courses. You will be allowed to ask questions, but for now, please don't be making noise over there to disturb the class. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So what they are saying is that when my students conduct research, you need to know that whether you like it or not, a day will come, you will be asked to conduct, you'll be compared to conduct research. And those of us who are lecturers, without conducting research, we can't even be promoted. And it starts from the undergraduate level. If you don't know how to conduct research, it will continue. You will finish, you will do well academically. Hey, all the courses you took, you, can, you might have got it. Hey, 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 B, B, B plus and what have you. Now you finish how to practicalize or how to work, put whatever you have done into practice. Pragmatically, it will be a problem. You cannot write anything. You cannot apply even from, if you can't even deduce, you can't even deduce a research topic or you cannot even deduce a paper, an article from your thesis. Then that's very serious. So what we are trying to say here is that those of you who are level 100, level 200, level 300, when you get to level 10, level 400, a day will come with you as to write thesis. And whether you like it or not, when do you normally write thesis or when do you normally uh, uh, conduct research? When you are writing her thesis, the thesis here is a plural form, don't forget. When it is singular, is T-H-E-S-I-S. But what I've observed is that sometimes they don't, people don't know the difference. Hey, you just have the plural form as T-H-E-S-I-S. No, that is singular. So the plural form is T-6. Just like you write D's and then you add S to it. Whether you like it or not, you might have done well when it comes to all the courses that you took right from level 100 to level 400. But if you are not able to present any research work like long essay or dissertation or what have you, thesis, you cannot graduate. That is why we say that it's in partial fulfillment, partial fulfillment. It's just a partial variation, those of you study mathematics. 
is part of it. It's partly, it's a requirement. If you do not meet this requirement, you cannot be awarded your degree. That is the meaning. So it's very, very important to have the research skills. And it starts from right from the courses that you normally undertake. When a particular topic is treated in class and you don't understand, you can go online. You can search from Google Scholar. You can even go to Scopus. You can search from Scopus. You can search for from where? A web of science. All these things, you may not be familiar with them. But at least you can go to Google Scholar. You can go to Google and search. And don't search for things blindly. But I'm trying to say that some of you, you go, for instance, you are using Google Translate or Translator. You enter something, and just as it says, you copy it verbatim. If you do that, you, don't, you will not do well as well. No, what, why are you going there? What exactly do you want? If it's wrong, we should be able to know. I can give you a specific example in French and in English. If I ask you to go and translate the, this expression, for instance, uh, to call a spade a spade, call a spade a spade. As you are there, you can try it. Anybody at all can try it. I'll ask you to, if you can get the results on uh, Google Translate or Google Translator. Just enter, call a spade a spade, and then you let me know the meaning that you get in French. Go and translate it into French. To call a spade a spade. You, when you get a result, let me know, and I will, I will ask you to uh, share it with us. And then there's also another expression that I once remember when I was teaching my student translation. Appeal by prosecution against the harshness of a sentence. Hello, Hello, Doc. Yes, sir. I have the answer. Yes, please go ahead. Ensha, Ensha. Ensha, Ensha. Ensha, Ensha. Very good. Ensha, yes. Ensha. Very good. Now, what is the equivalent? When you say Ensha, Ensha, what does it mean? Just translate it as it is. Ensha, Ensha. Translate it, Ensha, Ensha, literally. A cat, a cat. A cat, a cat. Very good, very good. Boba. A cat, a cat. Does it make sense? What does it mean? A cat, a cat. A cat, a cat sense. means what? <laughs> Meanwhile, we are looking for her to call a spade a spade. To call a spade a spade. This is the situation we have on. Call a cat, a cat. Does it make sense in English? Does it make sense even in French? That you translate a call a Ensha, uh, Ensha, Ensha, Ensha. So we need to know it that in French, to call a spade a spade is appelé Ensha, Ensha. Ou bien il faut appelé Ensha, Ensha. So when you are translating into English and then you go and write, call a cat a cat, call a cat a cat. You yourself ask yourself that, what, is it meaningful? Is it sensible? What meaning do you get from it? So you get to know, no, 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 this cannot be correct. And that's the fact. But some of you, you copy everything blindly, verbatim, without asking questions, without analyzing things, just as you say, and uh, learning skills. If you don't do that, you don't analyze things critically, you can't do what even in this translation. That's a typical example. So please learn to understand whatever you are looking for before you go there. If not, you have a lot of things there, you go and take it, and at the end of the day, you get everything wrong. So sometimes when I'm teaching students and their translation, and then because they have access to that platform, they will just go and enter it there and straight out know that, hey, listen to what you teach you. Listen to what you teach you before you go and search. If not, you will get it wrong. You won't get it right. So that is the point we are trying to say here. No how to conduct research right from level 100 or from the beginning of your university experience or education. And when you do so, you can do well.
and don't copy things kindly as it is, verbatim. And the next point is that writing academic essays like projects or essays, definitely we need to find and we need to reference. We need to check things very well. If you are being asked to talk about the importance of history, you, it's not about just going to the state. We need to explain, we need to have some proper sources to support your arguments or points. And then you have to reference accordingly before you can do well, you can get good marks when the examiner marks. So that is a point we are trying to say here. I, because of time, but in research, if it's about writing, those of you who may be doing uh, level 400 and then the uh, master's level, PAD, and what have you. Research, first of all, you, some of these aspects, you need to know them. After you have finished writing your thesis or your work, you need to come out of an abstract. An abstract is the summary of your study or research. We need to summarize it. And when you talk about the abstract, we need to talk about the, the background to the study, the background of your studies. How compare you to embark on that study? We need to talk about the methods that you adopted or you adapted in the study. And then you need to all discuss few, not all the findings, the major findings. You need to discuss few of them, you need to state few of them briefly. And then where possible, you can propose any point for future study. That is what I can talk about from here. And then when, about the point for research, definitely we can have research questions, objectives of the study, program statement. And then you have to talk about the literature review. You need to review literature, review, see what has been done already. The existing knowledge, we need to discuss those ones critically, okay? To support your point before you can proceed to the methods that you need to adopt in the study. And then you discuss the results and the findings, and then you draw conclusion. Or sometimes you can equally propose pedagogical measures or implications or implications of the study. Thank you. Let's continue uh, uh, so that we can be fast. Good. So now, what are the, after we have gone through the language skills, and now you know the language skills, you know the learning skills. Now we need, we have the, we have discussed equally the research skills. Now you know all these skills now. We want to conclude by asking you this question. What are the pragmatic or practical ways that you must adhere to, you must consider to enable you to do well academically? So we have a point here. You can earn your views. What are the things that you need to do? Now you have the language skills. We have the learning skills. We have the research skills. Now, practically. What must you do? What do you have to do? What do you ought to do in order to excel? Because the focus for our presentation today is that at the end of the day, we should be able to do well academically. And what we are going to discuss briefly now, if you take all that we discuss seriously, you can go and mark it somewhere. At the end of your university study or program, wherever you are, we should be able to do well academically. And then you will remember Language Center, GCTU Language Center, that we organize this program, this seminar, to support you, to help you to do well, to excel academically. Uh, because of time, let's continue without, um, when you finish, I'll ask you to ask questions and all that. Now, we need to review your lecture notes. You have the skills, you have all the skills needed. Now, what must you do? Review. When you say review, see it again and again. Your lecture notes, the slides, and recopy or rewrite when necessary. 
those sessions that you find them to be very, very important and probable, examinable questions or sessions for you. Do so. Review. Review here means study. Look at it again and again. Recopy, you can rewrite in your own ways. Whether you have really understood the concept, whether you have really understood the topic or not, you need to go through again and again. If you want to do well and you don't go through the lecture notes, the slides, you wait till the end of the semester exam. Or you wait when you're about to write the main semester before you start looking for the materials or learning materials or the slides to go through the videos and then what have you. My brother, my sister, you will never do well. What you are saying is if you must forget any point, don't forget this. Look at the slides, the lecture notes, again and again. Go through, read them again and again. And when necessary, we can paraphrase, we can rewrite in your own ways. The sessions that you find them to be probable, examinable sessions or questions. And if you do so, you will definitely do well. That is the point. If you don't do that, you are not a magician to do well. Now, you have to gather all notes. You need to gather all notes, all slides. And then you do well to gather all notes, all slides, the video presentation you might have missed, okay, from your lecturer or another course mate. Don't sit down, don't say that, oh, I wasn't there when this particular lesson was treated or some this topic was treated. The lecturer will not care, will not mind you whether you were there or not. So you need to find out, even if you are not attending lectures, get all the notes, get all the slides and study. That is why we call you students. There is a difference between a student, a student and a school child. A school child, you are not a school child. You are not a school, you, you are all not school children. You are all students. So if you look at the word student, in student, we can have study. A student is someone who studies. A student is someone who is highly studious. So if you are a student and you don't study, are you a student? And if you are not a student, then who are you? You are just a mere partaker or participant of school activities or university activities. So if it's your occupation or your profession is to study, you can say you're a university student when you don't study. You need to study. And once you study, then you can confidently say that you are a student. And you need to equally get a personal timetable for exam. A personal, I'm not talking about the university timetable or the timetable from the academic board or from the department. Some of you don't have a personal time to go for exam. Anything goes. Don't do that. If you do so, you will not do well. So set up a specific time to study for any exam that you are about to hold, write, or sit for. And schedule other activities around it. If you have exams to write, it's not every program that you must honor, every invitation that you must honor, including all of us here. So sometimes some of us may think that we are not friendly. Those of us who are in academia, lecturers, because I don't attend every program. I can't attend every program. That is the fact. You want everybody to see you that you are attending every program. You will not do well. You will not do well academically. You will not do well as a researcher, as an academic, you can't do well. It's not every program you must attend. You have to consider your time and honor the time you must study, you must learn. If there is any fashion, fashion or whatever, fashion or any program somewhere, you have to forego it and it's time for you to learn. And you say, I cannot learn because after this wedding invitation, I must honor it. After this funeral, I have to go. 
If I don't go, I don't know how this person will say, I don't care. You don't need to go. You, need to, you don't need to honor every invitation. Learn this. If you don't do that, my brother, my sister, you may not do well academically. That is the fact. Good. So take note of that point. May semester exam. So here we are discussing exams so that you can do well. May semester exams, exam questions, class exercises, or quizzes, you need to peruse them. When you talk about peruse, we need to study them. You need to read them carefully and analyze them critically. Peruse me semester questions, class exercises, and the quizzes you took earlier in the class or course. Sometimes, just yesterday, a lot of students were calling me simply because some of them didn't do well. Some of them didn't do well in the end of semester exam, which is so unfortunate because sometimes some of us intentionally repeat lectures usually repeat class questions that were set for mid-semester exam, questions that were set for quizzes or class exercises. We intentionally repeat them. And at the end of the mid-semester, we discuss. So after discussing, and then you go to the exam hall, those questions are repeated. You see them, and you write, and you get a single number. You get it single point or uh, uh, ah, it's so unfortunate. You go and get, get one or two, three, five, over 60. It means you didn't learn, you didn't study. And when it happens that way, it really pays me. Sometimes I feel for those students, but what can I do? Sometimes you even be compared to us amongst to their, their points or whatever they got. By the end of the day, imagine you even add 10 months to the student, somebody who got five or 10, the person will still not pass. That's a fact. So all that we are saying here is that, what I'm telling you is not just for maybe the, those of us who teach languages, French, English, and what have you. All the courses that you are going through or that you are being taught, that you are studying in your institution, we need to consider this. Because you, after you have been taught, then the mid-semester classwork will come. And after the classwork, mid-semester exam, before the end of semester exam will come. And uh, it continues like that. And you repeat questions. What you, what you normally do in class is probability that we see similar questions at the end of exam uh, uh, is very high. It's probable that you see questions, similar questions. And if you study them, you don't study them. And some of you, at the end of the semester, for instance, when they, you mark the end of semester uh, exams or uh, mid-semester exams, when they get their results and they realize that they couldn't do well, you see that they will start crumpling, folding it, then they dump it somewhere. If you don't do well, please don't throw it away. Study it. No, why didn't I do well? and try to correct it. So that when similar questions or the same questions are repeated in the exam, you can do well. You don't do well in the mid-semester exam. Final exams too, don't do well, simply because you do not peruse mid-semester mid exam questions, class exercises, and the questions you took earlier in the class or course. So do well to go through this. And as you do so, it will help you very, very well. Good. The next point is that have a summary or an outline of the examinable topics. Prepare a summary or an outline of everything to be tested to get an overview of the unit. It's work, but some of you don't do it. If you don't do all this, you can't do well. What we mean is that after the particular course, after a particular lesson has been taught or topic has been treated, and you are able to prepare a summary, you are able to write the essential points or the salient points, the major points, you are able to summarize all the points. It means you have understood it. You have understood that particular topic, if only you can do so. 
And if you can do that, and in the exams, you are going to write an essay, and you remember the summary that you were able to come out with, or that you were able to all put together, definitely you'll be able to develop those points. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to write meaningfully and effectively to do well academically. So that is the point we are trying to say here. Let's be fast. And we need to have a detailed study of your art line. After you have done so, now you can prepare a detailed study. If you can't do it in a detailed study, it's okay. If you can't do it, that is simply enough because you have your points already. But if you can proceed, you can continue and prepare a detailed study of your outline. It's a plus, and definitely that will help you to do well as well. Good. After you have done all that or all these, predict probable exam questions. Predict. You don't need a prophet anywhere. Don't rely on those so those uh, so-called prophets who can predict exam questions. Or who can come and tell you that, come, we will do something for you. When you write the exam, you get it. No, be your own prophet. You should be a prophet yourself. And everybody here must be a prophet. If only you have gone through all that you have been taught in class very well, you should predict. Prophets predict. Prophets, they usually predict. They foretell. We should be able to foretell. We should be able to foresee. We should be able to predict questions that will come for each of the courses that you have studied, you should be able to predict. Predict test and then exam questions and practice answering them. When you finish, you predict, these are the questions that are coming. Start answering them and see. And then when you finish, you can mark yourself and you will definitely do well. At the end of the day, have a list of baffling questions. A list of baffling questions, questions that are not points that are not all that clear. It's like we we'll finish teaching, we ask students, please do have questions, no questions. Have with the question, pas de question. Meanwhile, certain things might not be clear to the students at all. Till you are lecturer, you ask them questions, now you get to know that they didn't understand anything that you might have taught them. But if you are a student, you yourself, before you enter any class, have a list of baffling questions to ask your teacher or lecturer, or even ask your colleagues. You should have a list of baffling questions. If you are a student, you are a candidate, and you don't have a list of baffling questions, you are not a studious and serious student. We should always have a list of baffling questions to ask your teachers or lecturers. And if possible, maybe to ask your colleagues that you think they can help you to answer those questions. So baffling questions, questions that you find them difficult to understand, they are not all that clear, you don't know how to go about them, try to have a list of those questions. And once you're able to answer those baffling questions, have answers to those baffling questions, then definitely you are on your way for success, for excellence. Good. Study each topic. Maybe they might be the last point, and then I will conclude. Study each topic treated several times. Each lesson treated, study them how many times? Several times. On countable. You should be, study them. Study them again and again. And when necessary, you can even study each of them at least 10 times, if, if possible. It depends on your level of understanding. You don't understand and you don't study. How will you do well? You don't understand it and you don't study. How will you do well? Your own motto says knowledge comes from learning. So you need to study it in order to have the knowledge, in order to be knowledgeable in whatever you might have been taught. So study each topic, each lesson treated in class several times in order to get an excellent grade in that course or that you are pursuing you need to do well to study them at least 10 times each of the topics treated either face to face online you need to study them at least 
10 times. We need to peruse. We need to go through them. We need to assess them. We need to analyze them 10 times. What we are saying is that if you have been taken through language skills and then language skills, the topic is not clear for you, go through language skills again and again several times. When you get understanding, then you stop learning, you stop going through that particular topic. But when you don't understand and you put it aside, and the topic that you know, that is what you study every day, definitely you will not do well academically. That is the point we are trying to make here. Good. Hello? Yes, okay, no. I hope you are with me. Yes. Hello, yeah, we are here. Thank you. Good. So now you have to organize yourself. We have to be snappy. If not, this one should be the second part of the seminar, like organization and be all sort of things here. So let's be brief and then you go to, you need to organize yourself very well in the exam before you write any exam. Organize yourself and organize. There's a difference. This one is a British spelling. If you are an organization, you see the S is British spelling, it is American spelling for the Z. Take note of that. So you need to organize yourself. So according to College of St. Benedict 2020, the well-organized, neat appearing individual will usually get the nod over another equally capable person who is disorganized and careless in appearance. How you write, how you present your work. You won't even put the lecturer or the examiner off. I remember I was once marking some student scripts. And then instead of numbering the questions, the person, is it objective test question or multiple choice? The person one A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, thinking that like you have, you have to look and find out is it number one or number two? My brother, my you cannot have to any lecture. Write what you know and be sure what you are writing is correct. And when you do that, that will help you very well. That is the point we are trying to do here. So don't write to start writing. You prepare, you organize your points, and then you understand that you have to also understand keywords or key verbs in the essay. Maybe in the near future, we continue with them, but because of time, we'll pause here. And you can even see some of the keywords. I don't want us to go through all that. I will move on to the conclusion. Our next presentation or seminar that we organize next time, we will discuss the importance of understanding keywords or verbs or words that will help, equally help you to do well. I think we have had enough for today. Don't forget, organize yourself. Don't write to start writing. Whatever you are doing in life, Organize, prepare, organize your points, and then you understand before you start writing. And when you do that, you will definitely do well. So in conclusion, one cannot excel, one cannot do well as a university student without acquiring the four language skills. Let learning be your lifestyle, be a habitual learner and not an occasional learner or student. When it's time for you to write exam, that's what you write, you will study. When it's time for you to write any assignment, that's all you go and look for the information. If you do that, you are an occasional learner and no occasional learner can do well academically. And you can even deduce that repetition is the strongest tool against forgetfulness in pedagogy or academia. Pedagogy is a method that you adopt in teaching and learning. If you want to do well, you need to hold let repetition, learning repeatedly be a lifestyle. And as you do so, you will definitely do well. And don't forget this, the motto of Ghana Communication Technology University, knowledge comes from learning. So if you don't know and you will learn, you will definitely know. So do well to learn what you want to know and then you will know. 
But what you normally see is that students, the scores or the subject that they don't know, they don't learn it. And if you don't learn the subject that you don't know, the course that you are not all that good at, how will you be knowledgeable? How will you know it? So learn to study what you don't know so that you can go. It will help you. And pay attention to details. Learn to pay attention to details. And that's why you're talking about analyzing things critically, assessing things, examining things, not just taking things blindly. If you do so, definitely you can do well. And in conclusion, read through your write-up anytime you write anything. Scrutinize it. Mark your work. Self-assessment. Evaluate, self-evaluation before you submit your script or manuscript. So I'll ask the question, what is the difference between script and manuscript? With that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So our moderator will continue and then you invite our HOD after questions and answers, and then we can call it a day. Uh, Doc, thank you so much for this ins insightful presentation. I know most of us are not living here the same. We've picked one or two techniques that will help us in our academic endeavors. So we should try and be uh, students who just don't copy and paste. We should try to be innovative. We should, we should try and be innovative always. As most students do now, they, when they are giving assignments or they are giving presentations, they just go online, take the information. They don't peruse the information. They will just give back what they picked from the internet. So as from today, let's try to be innovative. Let's try to find new techniques to, to, to improve our academic work. Thank you, Doc. It's a pleasure. But as I said, I'm yet to be awarded my PhD, and it shall not be long. So I'm not dog yet. My beloved <laughs> <laughs> colleague, Mr. Buba, thank you for the promotion. Good. You're so now welcome. questions and answers. Those who have questions, so they can ask. Anybody Before, who has, you can yes. go ahead. And you just raise your hand and ask your question. You unmute yourself and ask a question. Thank you. Hello, any question? Hello? Doc, is like no one has any question. Don't on this note, I think we should end the, the seminar. So you are the HOD for his concluding remarks, or if he has a hey, word to say before you call it a day. He's in a meeting. He's in a meeting at the moment. Yes, please. That's oh. why I didn't. All right. So we don't have questions for me. These are some of the things we're asking. We don't have a list of baffling questions. Oh, my students. Do you have some police joining from any other country apart from Ghana? so that we recognize them accordingly. We will acknowledge them, their presence. Do we have some colleagues joining from La Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, Cameroon, so that we acknowledge them? Good afternoon, uh, dear masters. Uh, yes, I am from Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, it's a real pleasure for me to attend this, uh, this seminar. My name is Edouan Antoine. Very good, Edouan Antoine. Nice meeting you and thanks for joining us. And we hope it's not going to be the first and the last. Anytime at all that we organize our program, you are cordially invited to be part of our presentation. Thanks so much for joining us and God bless you. We will make the presentation, we recorded it, we will make it available for colleagues so that you can actually share with your loved ones as well. Thanks for joining, Antoine. We are very grateful to have you with us. Thank you, dear master. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, I think Andrew Nati has raised a hand. Andrew, you can go ahead with your question or comment. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Andrew. And good afternoon to all colleagues who were able to join this um, seminar. Um, I joined about 20 minutes ago, but um, I must say, this is a, a, a well and a, a good a time. The time is right for, for some of us because I am part of the evening service and um, I work on my own. And sometimes the up and downs, you don't get the time to study. But with a little that you have shared for us with us today, I think this is a good seminar, and um, we would like, I would like to stand on behalf of my colleagues, the, the evening students, to say thank you, and we will need more of this from time to time. My, my request is, is that the timing of it, uh, we must look at it again so that um, we can join them, even if it's a weekend evening. I think we would, we would appreciate it. This is just a suggestion, um, okay. if anyone has a different um, um, opinion to it uh, is welcome. But first of most of all, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you so much. Thank you. Amen. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much for your encouragement. Good. There's any other comments, questions, contributions before you call it a day? Mr. Buba. Mr. Buba. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you can continue moderating and you should continue. You are you as if I've taken your work from okay. you. Okay, on this note, since in the absence of any further questions, I think the meeting can come to an end now. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Doc. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Amen. Okay, goodbye. Thank you all.